This is a presentation of our paper, Large Scale Empirical Study of Android AppT Compilation. My name is Ulf Kargen from Linköping University, and this is work done together with Noah Maute from Solan University and Noel Tramiri, also from Linköping. So in this work we're interested in Android decompilation, the process of translating Dalvik bytecode of an Android app into high-level Java source code so that it can be more easily understood. And this has become an indispensable aid during, for example, malware analysis and security auditing of Android apps. But it's also employed frequently in academic works, for example, as a first step in an analysis pipeline. And especially in this set setting, it's generally considered a solved problem in many cases, in the sense that it is assumed that we can always recover source code from methods in an Android app. And the central question we're interested in in this work is to what degree that assumption is actually warranted. And this also forms the first research question of our work. The second research question is concerned with obfuscation. So it is known that on other platforms like native code or uh, on the Java virtual machine, it's relatively easy to apply code obfuscation that completely prevents decompilation. These types of techniques are significantly harder to uh, perform on Android, however, because of the stricter verification done by the Android runtime. So it's interesting to note to what degree decompilation breaking obfuscation is actually a problem when analyzing, for example, malware or commercial apps for the Android platform, which is known to frequently be uh, obfuscated in various ways. For our third research question, we were interested to see if Android decompilers tend to systematically fail on the same methods or if the results complement each other. And this is based on uh, two prior works, uh, one by Young et al. Uh, on a smaller number of open source apps where they showed that the ensemble of decompilers could often uh, outperform uh, in any single decompiler. And also Arong et al. showed similar results uh, for Java virtual machine decompilers. So we were interested to see uh, if these results generalized with our larger uh, and more diverse set of Android apps. And long story short, we could essentially show that uh, uh, these results also held in our study. So uh, for that reason, I will focus on questions one and two. Uh, in the interest of time uh, in this presentation. So in our study, we uh, investigated the method decompilation success rate for four popular decompilers on three different data sets, specifically uh, about 3,000 open source apps from the F-Droid repository, about 14,000 apps from Google Play that we crawled in preparation for this study, and also about 25,000 malware samples from a previous collection of Android malware. For the decompilers, we used uh, the native Dalvik decompiler, Jadux, uh, in addition to three popular Java decompilers, CFR, Fernflower, and Procyon. And here we use dex to jar to convert uh, the uh, dex files of Android apps to jar files that can be processed by the Java decompilers. And finally, we also performed a complementary manual analysis that I will return to a little bit later. So before we go into the results, I want to give a very quick overview uh, without, uh, of our methodology without going into the technical details. Um, so uh, the aim of our study was to find the percentage of methods that were reported as successfully decompiled for each app. So in this study, we did not consider the quality of uh, the decompilation. Um, so in order to get this, this number, we first need to get uh, the total number of methods from uh, uh, each app. And this can be relatively easily extracted using uh, APK tool from the Android SDK. And then we essentially have two options for getting the actual success rate. So we can either parse the recovered source code, the actual output from the decompilation, to get the number of successfully decompiled methods, or we could parse the error outputs to get the number of methods that the decompilers decompiler reported as, as failed to decompile. And while it might seem like the first option is the most prudent one, uh, it actually has some potential pitfalls. So first of all, running a full-fledged Java parser on uh, all the outputs from, from the decompilers would introduce a very high uh, overhead and a very high computational demand. That would mean that the, the time for running our, our experiment will be uh, significantly inflated. 
Uh, and also, uh, since we cannot be 100% certain that the output from the decompilation is perfectly compliant Java code, we may run into an unforeseeable number of failure modes due to this, which might also be difficult to detect. So, uh, because of this, we chose the second approach of parsing the error outputs to get the number of methods that failed. Uh, so, of course, we needed to also consider a number of other technical challenges, but in the interest of time, uh, I would have to refer you to the paper for those. So instead, we move on to answering research question one. To what degree can we expect decompilers to successfully recover source code from Android apps? And, prepare, uh, and comparing the results from for the four different decompilers, we see that uh, Yadex outperformed the other uh, three by a broad margin. Uh, so almost two orders of magnitude. We see that the uh, uh, average uh, failure rate, method decompilation failure rate per app for Yadex were about 0.02%, whereas, whereas it was about 1% for, for the other uh, decompilers. So we, we clearly see that a, a, a native decompiler performs much better. We also see that there is some some significant differences here between the data sets and uh, that is something that we will return to a little bit later. But first it's interesting also to know uh, to what degree apps can be fully decompiled, that is if we can re uh, recover source code for every method in an app, especially if you, you're running the decompiler as some, some part of, of, of uh, an experiment, um, it's interesting to, to know this. And uh, we see that even the uh, best performing Yadex decompiler actually doesn't fare so good in this, this regard. So for, for the open source data set, uh, we failed to fully decompile about 25% of apps and similarly about 20% of the malware apps. And for the Google Play ones, it's, we, we have even worse figures uh, with 80% that could not be fully decompiled. And this is most likely because um, the uh, average number of methods in the Google Play apps were uh, significantly larger than, than for the uh, open source and malware apps. And looking at the other three decompilers, we see that they perform uh, even worse, with most of them having uh, figures in about 90% uh, of, of apps that, that could not be fully decompiled. But moving on to research question two, to what degree decompilation breaking obfuscation is a concern when analyzing malware or commercial apps for the Android platform? Uh, this is really a two-part question where we uh, first need to know if code obfuscation is actually a factor in decompilation failures at all, and if so, why decompilers tend to, to fail on the obfuscated code. And we've done, we have done a number of uh, analysis to try to shed some light into to these questions. Uh, Beginning with some preliminary observations, uh, we return to the fact that there was some, some uh, noticeable difference between the data sets and we wanted to see if this was in fact a statistically significant difference. So we performed a thousandfold bootstrap sampling of the results for JADEX, which was the best performing decompiler. Um, and uh, based on this uh, bootstrap 95% confidence intervals we see in the figure, we, we see that there is obviously a a significant, statistically significant difference between the data sets, uh, with the malware apps having about 10 times higher failure rates than um, the open source apps. And for the uh, Google Play apps, we see about twice the uh, failure rate. So this is quite a substantial difference between the data sets, even though the absolute failure rates are, are uh, quite low because of the good performance of JADEX. We also uh, looked at the uh, difference in failure rates for ad-supported versus non-ad-supported apps in Google Play and found that the ad-supported ones had about 50% higher failure rates. Uh, so these two observations both point towards obfuscation being a factor in decompilation failures. Uh, so we know that malware is frequently obfuscated, whereas uh, there is very little reason for, for an open source developer to use code obfuscation. So uh, this would indicate that uh, that there could be a difference due to obfuscation. Uh, and also, similarly for commercial apps, the developers have a greater incentive to use obfuscation, um, which could explain why we see a greater uh, degree of failures for ad-supported apps in Google Play. 
So to gain some further insights and, and see if we could confirm these, uh, these suspicions, uh, we performed a number of additional analysis. I will only discuss the manual analysis in this presentation. We also did some analysis of the um, uh, uh, identifiers associated with decompilation failures, and you can read about that in the paper. So for the manual analysis, uh, we uh, selected the five apps with highest JADEX failure rates in each dataset, and we uh, tried to understand why the decompilers failed and if we could find signs of code obfuscation. So to very quickly sum up the uh, most important findings uh, for the F-Droid dataset, the open source apps, uh, we did not find any signs of obfuscation and this is relatively unsurprising as, as I mentioned before. So uh, the failures in this case was instead caused by deep levels of nesting of various kinds, like deeply nested inner classes, inner classes wrapped in other inner classes and so on, uh, and deeply nested control flow or deeply nested inheritance relationships, and complex control flow in general. For the Google Play dataset, however, we did see uh, a number of failures due to obfuscation, uh, in fact, in all five of the apps. Uh, and for four out of the five apps, these failures were due to the optimized library which upon closer examination turned out to be uh, re responsible for about 3% of all failures on Google Play apps. And this is because this library is heavily obfuscated with large code blocks of deeply nested loops with break statements that appear to be protected by opaque predicates and this causes the compilers to, to frequently fail. So JADEX for example fails with the error JADEX overflow error regions count limit reached. Uh, so it seems like JADEX hits some kind of internal limit or experiences some kind of resource exhaustion when, when trying to deal with this uh, these obfuscated code. And the fifth app, like I mentioned, also showed some evidence of code obfuscation that caused the compilation failures. And then finally, the malware dataset. Uh, for this uh, dataset, we only observed actually one app that had uh, uh, obfuscation and this caused very massive decompilation failures. Uh, and uh, when we analyzed this in more detail, it seems that this is an, some older malware sam sample for, for an older version of Android because the nature of the, the obfuscation means that this would most likely fail the uh, ver runtime verification done in modern Android. Um, for the other four apps, we could not find any signs of obfuscation, but instead we had uh, decompilation failures for similar reasons as with the open source apps and also a large number of try-catch blocks for I.O. that appeared to be one of the most prominent causes of failures. So trying to bring this together for some kind of to some kind of conclusion for research question two, it, it does appear that obfuscation uh, increases the likelihood of failures, but we didn't find ed any evidence of obfuscation deliberately designed to prevent decompilation. But obfuscation seems to mo ma mainly be used as a deterrent for manual reverse engineering. Um, and decompilers seem to fail on obfuscated code essentially for the same reasons as they fail on non-obfuscated code, namely complex control flow and deep levels of nesting of various kinds. So wrapping this up into some overall conclusions uh, for our work, uh, we saw that the native JADEX decompiler outperformed the others by a broad margin, but even this one failed to fully decompile many apps. For example, 25% of open source apps could not be fully uh, decompiled. Um, and also we observed that failures were often due to deep levels of nesting of various kinds and complex control flow. And uh, this seems to cause some kind of resource, resource exhaustion in decompilers, like uh, reaching some kind of maximum recursion depth or hitting some kind of internal limit or uh, uh, filling up some buffer or something like this uh, that causes uh, the decompiler to error out. Um, and code obfuscation does appear to increase the likelihood of this, uh, but we couldn't find any evidence of deliberate anti-decompilation obfuscation in modern apps, which is in contrast to what we observe, for example, on, on, on native code and, and code for the Java virtual machine, where these techniques are quite uh, common. So it, it appears that failures are in some kind of side effect of the obfuscation rather than the uh, intended uh, effect. And this is actually very good news because this suggests that near-perfect decompilation should be achievable with implementation level improvements to the decompilers to get rid of these resource exhaustion problems that we saw. So on that positive note, I conclude my presentation and thank you very much for listening.